Victoria's Secret, the American lingerie company, has been putting on their wildly popular fashion shows since 1996. Known as a Supermodel Super Bowl, or Night of a Thousand Thongs, the annual event has been a huge marketing success story for the brand, thanks to their basic but effective formula. Big budget flash plus exposed supermodel flesh equals loads of worldwide publicity. This is a case where a fashion show really works. I mean, they have a marvelous brand, you know, that is very popular. This is not planned for the fashion crowd. This is fashion as entertainment. Over the years, the event has grown steadily in both size and international reach. In 1999, the show was webcast live on the internet. In the year 2000, it traveled to the south of France. And last year, it made it to primetime American television as a one-hour special on the ABC network. This year's show, held recently at the New York City Armory, was being televised once again, this time by CBS. Fashion File dropped by for a peek behind the scenes in the hours leading up to the big event. We're backstage at Victoria's Secrets. Um, this is the hair and makeup room. As you see, it's very crazy. Lots of things going on. Crazy chaos. Everyone's running around. Everyone's on the phone. Everyone's shouting for each other, yelling. But it's all fun. The makeup is shimmery, champagne kind of colors with a bit of gold and a bit of glitter um, and a glossy lip. It's actually very simple because these girls, they're gorgeous as they are. How can I improve, you know? I mean, look, it's Heidi, what can I do? I'm going to co-host the show today with uh, Mark McGrath. So we have a lot to do today. I have three looks plus hosting the show. So it's a bit nutty today. I'm starting out a segment of the show. And I'm doing some flamenco dancing, a little sexy. That people don't know I can do, so it'll be a shot. You look at the Wall of Fame over there, and it's like Tyra, you know, Heidi, Giselle. You're like, you gotta be there here. Is everybody here? Welcome to the 2002 Victoria's Secret show. <laughs> As you know, the show is televised. There are cameras everywhere. I know you're all almost naked when you come out. Just try to forget that and to feel really natural <laughs> and to feel really good. I mean, there is no one in the world that looks better than you almost naked, which is the reason why you're here. Each year it gets bigger and bigger and more and more people. And um, it's like always trying to top what we did the year before. So there's a scene backstage, but it's going to be an amazing show on stage. Tonight, from New York City, is the 2002 Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. The show, as it turned out, was actually two shows. The special that aired on CBS featured some elements, like behind-the-scenes skits with models and a performance by Phil Collins that were taped prior to the runway show in front of a different audience. No, I won't stop. We're trying to make an interesting hour of television, right? I mean, it's like we, so the, the show in and of itself is about 20 minutes, but, but everything we do around it has to be compelling as well. The main event, the runway portion of the show, offered a lot more to see and hear than the average fashion show. An entire gospel choir at the beginning. Then there will be 40 African and Brazilian drummers. Then there is a live flamenco guitar player that comes down from the sky to play to the girls. Then there are 20 halves. I mean, it's a lot and lot of actions. In addition to all of that, there were performances by Mark Anthony. It's a tragedy, tragedy. 
and Destiny's Child. As well as an unscheduled anti-fur protest that got edited out of the final CBS broadcast of the show. In terms of actual fashion content, the lingerie was, like the rest of the show, slightly over the top. It's a um, holiday trip around the world. We start with um, Russia and everything's like silver and gold and very embellished. And then we go to Africa and there's a lot of animal print things and we did a lot of embellishing on that. And then we go to um, Spain and you see a lot of black lace and red flowers. And then from there we go to Japan, which is all white and beautiful and um, lots of neon, very, very modern. So it's not a traditional holiday show like we did last year with red and white. It's more of a um, amazing fantasy around the world. In the end, the fashion didn't really matter. And the performers were just opening acts for the real stars of the night, the models many of whom were doing the show for the first time. I think you, you never really imagine yourself to be, you know, potential Victoria's Secrets model because it is, you always picture people like Giselle, you know, like the famous body and all this kind of thing. And uh, for a little Irish girl, you know, you know, you don't really see the correlation between the two. It's a great moment like for as a model to be cast and like, to be here because you've been chosen. Today is like 30 girls doing the show and probably it's like more than 3,000 girls only in New York that wanted to be here doing it. So it's great. It's amazing. And while some came more prepared than others... No, I didn't prepare for this week. Basically, I just have to show up. Honestly, I didn't do anything, and I hear everybody going to the tanning salon and went to the gym and starving themselves for days. The only thing that I did is I skipped this yard yesterday. They all knew exactly what to do at showtime. Basically, you have to be sexy and be sure of yourself and just walk it through. You can be the way you want to be. You know, you can be sexy, beautiful, elegant, classic, everything. Strong, confident, and sexy, but innocent and angelical at the same time. Not vulgar, you know, just beautiful, glamorous. You just have to play the beautiful, sexy woman. Make it fun for everyone that's going to watch it, and yeah, and just have a laugh, I guess. New York for Fashion File and Tim Blanks, contributing editor of Fashion Magazine.